Hi there. This is Ryan Malloy here at the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In this video, we're going to discuss limits with sine and cosine in calculus. So here we have our two familiar trigonometric functions, sine and cosine. And we're going to look at these three limits. The limit as x goes to 0 of f of x, the limit as x goes to pi, and the limit as x goes to infinity. We'll start with this one, limit as x goes to 0. Now, there are a lot of functions for which the point x equals 0 creates some sort of problem. Like if the function has an x in the denominator, then the function will be undefined at that point, and determining the limit can be somewhat tricky. But that's not the case for sine and cosine. They are so-called well-behaved functions. They're continuous and well-defined everywhere on the real number line. So with this limit, we can simply plug in the value and see what we get. It's equal to sine of 0, which is just 0. Similarly for cosine. Cosine of 0, which is just 1. And the same is going to be true for the limit as x approaches pi. This value is no different than any other. There's no reason to suspect that either of these functions will be poorly behaved at x equals pi. Though one does need to be a little bit tricky if one is using the inverse uh, functions, such as inverse sine of x, or even 1 over sine of x. Some of the other trigonometric functions do have discontinuities in them. But for now, we're just looking at sine and cosine, which are, as we said before, well-behaved. So we can simply plug in the value here. Sine of pi, which is just 0. And here we have cosine of pi, which is equal to negative 1. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the limit as x approaches infinity. And you might think that since sine and cosine are as well-behaved as we've been making them out to be, that this should be just as easy as before. But think about something. With most functions, when you're looking at x going to infinity, one of three things usually happens. It either shoots down to negative infinity, shoots up towards positive infinity, or it approaches some value asymptotically. But the trigonometric functions don't do any of those things. They just oscillate back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1. No matter how far out you go towards positive infinity, there will not ever be a point beyond which the function will have normal end behavior. So these limits do not exist. My name is Ryan Malloy, and we've just discussed limits with sine and cosine in calculus.